Okay, so today we're going to look at how to use the Voxy model function in GeoSoft to do quick inversions of your data. And so first step is if you're going to use magnetic data, and you can actually see here I've got TMI data over the Tromsberg anomaly, which is a circular anomaly. Um, I've also here got gravity, and then on the right-hand side I've got topography data. If you want to do it with your magnetics, you need to take into account your flight height in this inversion. And so how I do that is I take my topography and I add on the flight height. So my flight height is 150 meters. So what I do is I go grid and image, grid math. So I'm going to add 150 to this grid. And so I'm going to insert a variable. And so this variable of mine, I'm going to scroll down and look for my topography data set, which is this etopa at the bottom. And my final one, the final grid, is going to be etopa 150. So I know exactly what it is. So you can see here, G0 is the etopa 150. It's my final answer. G1 over here is equal to etopo, um, my etopo grid plus 150. And my topography is in meters, so I know I can add 150 to it, and it's in the correct units. And I click on OK. And it takes a while to calculate it. Okay, and I'm going to put this grid down and I'm going to add this to my view here. And for those of you who've never used this function up here, this brown button up here, the second one says change extents on all maps. So when I click on it, it changes the extents of the other maps to be the same as this etopo one. But now I want to view the whole grid, so I click on the earth and it zooms out. That was just a quick extra function. Okay, so now I've got my magnetics and my 150 meters added to my topography. And so now I can do my, uh, carry out my boxy inversion. And so what I'm going to do here is, if you don't have this boxy menu at the top, you go to GX, load menu, and you scroll down to V, and you double click on boxy.omn, and then it loads it up top here. And I've had it before on another machine, that when I click on boxy, only one of these is available. Something's wrong with your download then. You should be able to have all three of these options. You might want to reinstall it. I never actually solved the problem. But I'm going to choose the first one, New Voxy from Polygon. And you can see here it's given me a Voxy name. It's naming a Polygon file. So a Polygon file, I have to define a Polygon over the area that I want to create, do the inversion for. It's picked up that my coordinate system is UTM. I suggest that your coordinate system be in meters. It gets quite a bit... Maybe a bit more complicated in degrees. Maybe not. Um, I don't know. I usually do mine in meters. Then below it says, what is your surface file? And so it can either be a constant value, which is less accurate, or I've got a DEM, is a digital elevation model. And underneath, I've got eTopo data, which is free data you can download online. I'll also give you another tutorial on how you can actually get data in Geosoft. So you would use the scroll down menu and find your topography data if it hasn't loaded it. And then you can see here, model resolution. There's several options. By default, it's clicked on 2,500 meters for me. And therefore, the number of blocks in my model is going to be 46 by 40 by 8. And that's okay, because I've got the free version. So my limit on this is 50 by 50 by 50. So you can see if I decrease my resolution, so my model, my model is going to be more accurate, the number of cells goes way over 50, and it's not going to work if I've got the free version. So choose a number that gives you cells that is less than 50 by 50 by 50. And because of this limitation, you really want your polygon to be as small as possible. Because if you have a really large area, you're going to have very coarse blocks and a low resolution model. So you don't want to go over too large an area. So I'm going to click now over Create a Polygon. And it says define the model by drawing a polygon on the map using the mouse. When you're done, right click and select done. So click OK. And very unfortunately, um, you can see that my topography map is the one that's selected. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to click here. But I mean, I can't very accurately see what I'm doing. So we're going to have to redo it. So I get to the end of my square, I right click, I go done. Um, and it's going to write over this polygon file, that's fine, you can click save, and I'm happy for it to overwrite. I had a file originally. And you can see my number of cells has jumped up. So, let's see, I can't click underneath, so very unfortunately I'm going to have to close that. I'm actually going to click here on my gravity map, because that outlines the best where the anomaly ends in the east, southeast here. 
I'm going to click on my gravity map. Oh, wait, make it small again. I'm going to click on boxy, new boxy by polygon. Thankfully, it saves all my parameters. Again, I click create polygon. Okay. And I'm going to go outside of the red part of the anomaly here. Again, not very really accurate. I mean, the body could be much smaller than this, the wavelength of this anomaly. But I'm using that as a guide. I'm going to right click done. I'm going to save it. I'm going to overwrite it. And again, and uh, at the resolution of 1000, it's too, too large, the number of boxes, but if I go down to 2500 meters for the size of my box, the resolution's okay. I click on OK. It's just busy creating the, view, the new boxy document. Okay, and it says here to us, your boxy session does not contain any measured data. Would you like to run the data, add data with it? Yes, I'd like to do that. Okay, and so the data I'm going to add is my magnetic data. And I don't have it in a database. I've got it in a grid. So I change the data source to grid. And I go to the scroll down here. And mine is called TMI at the bottom. I find my magnetic grid. The elevation data, I don't have a constant elevation. I've actually got an elevation grid. Um, that's a good point. You could have actually, instead of changing your uh, grid, you probably could have clicked here on constant above the terrain. So it knows your terrain grid, and here you could have put in 150 meters, which is the flat height. Um, or you could go here, and I can go and choose my etopo 150, where I've actually added the topography. So, okay, that's a, something I've never noticed before, and that'll save you some time. I leave the samples per cell size the same, click next. Might just take a bit of time to load. Okay, and so it says to me, what model am I creating here? I'm creating a susceptibility model. Type of data is obviously magnetic. I leave the error the same. And that's asking me IGRF. So um, we all know IGRF links to when the data was actually collected. And so over here on the right is the calculator button. I get an error there. Okay, so the problem is, sorry, I, I need to put in the date first. Very unfortunately, I don't know super accurately when mine was collected. So I just know it was collected in the 1980s. And so I just put 1980-01-01. Really, it, it's quite important you try and get the month when your data was collected and the year. And so now I click on the calculator, and it gives me the field strength, the inclination, and the declination. So you really want to be quite accurate on this, if possible. And click Next. And so do I want to remove a background value? For now, I'm not going to remove a background value. I really prefer to look at my model first without it removed. And then later on, you can play around, because often you run the risk of removing real data when you remove the background value. You can either remove a constant or a linear trend. But I just want to look what my model looks like first. And I'm going to click Finish. OK, and so now the model's loaded in here. I'm just going to increase the size of my window. And so what you can actually see here, if I click on the plus next to area of interest, it's got the polygon outline, which I can take off. It's got a mesh to show me what my boxy boxes look like. And it, I can take off the DM, which shows us the topography. And then currently clicked is data location, so the actual stations. And underneath, I could click on residual mag, and it loads it in there. OK, and so boxy is a very quick way of doing an inversion. You can add constraints. We're not going to do it today. So we're just going to do the basics of how to run an inversion. Please remember that all potential field models are non-unique, and it really depends on how much data you've got to constrain it. You can't say it's the definite answer to the question. So what we do here is we click on Model, Run Inversion, and hopefully it should run smoothly. You might run into problems if your university has a proxy server, or certain things are blocked. Um, sometimes I just come home and do it on my home network. And so what happens is your data gets uploaded to the cloud and then gets run on the Geosoft machines because they're a lot faster than running it on your machine. You might not have sufficient processing speed. So it has to be uploaded, processed, and then the model downloaded to your machine. And it can take a little bit of time.
Okay, so something you'll probably need to do during this process is go to the bottom right hand side of your screen and click on the Geosoft icon and it seems to say that I'm connected and it's checking for updates and you can see it's busy downloading updates here. If you go here and it doesn't say that you're connected, you might have to click on sign in and then you'll have to sign in with your email and password that you used to originally download Geosoft. Um, there's no cost required for this, you just go onto their website and sign up for it. Okay, so once you sign in, maybe you got an error that you weren't signed in, and you can try run the inversion again. I won't deny, uh, I've been having a lot of problems lately running the inversion um, with the proxy setting at my university. I'm aware, so it's actually working. <laughs> so it's like the seventh, seventh time I've done this. So you can see here, it shows you it's uploading the inversion data. And it's going to initialize, it's going to run the model on the Geosoft machines, and then it's going to download the model. And so this depends obviously how big your data is, how fast your internet is. It might take a while. So it says that it's initializing the job resources, assigning functional resources. It may take up to 20 minutes. Usually it doesn't take that long if it's not such a big model because you're running the free one. Um, it's busy running the Voxy model building the matrix system. So it, it takes you step by step through it so you know what's happening. Uh, run several iterations and then ultimately will download your model onto the screen. Okay, so you can see inversion states is success. Um, you can close this window down here if you want. And so here is your Voxy model. And you can see it's loaded up here. This is the name of the model, susceptibility with the date and the time. And now what you can do is change the values to better understand what this model looks like. So, excuse me, click on your model. Go down here. You could make your model transparent or not. Um, you could take off the fill or make it wireframe like that. But go here to clipping is the second option. And so it tells you your data runs from a susceptibility of minus 0.01. 0.03 and you can actually use these arrows down here to remove some of the susceptibilities so you can see I'm going up I'm taking my values and maybe we can even take it to zero if you want if you're more comfortable with that and um, you can play around with that but also to decrease these I suppose it's the upper values that you're most interested in so it's best to just take away the smaller values and you can see here I'm getting down to what the crux of the body looks like, well, according to this inversion, might not actually be the case. You really need boreholes to look at this. So this is using the magnetic data, and north is up, and east is to the east, uh, sorry, to the right here. And so you can see here that this is where the very high susceptibility bodies are, according to this inversion. And so I've got susceptibilities here between 0 0.018 and 0. 039. You can even put the mag date on top if you want to understand where that lies relative to the data. So I click on it and it's picking up this anomaly here, this one here, this one here. And yeah, so now this is an idea of what the version looks like. You can go back here and you can add some of the lower susceptibility values in. Okay. You can play around with that. This is the constraints tool, settings. I'm not going to go into too much detail today. But what I'm going to do here is right click and go export. Because then you can actually add it into a 3D model later. So display results in a 3D map. We can do that. Or export it normally. Or export padded. Let's give it a try. Display results in a 3D map. So file name. It wants to call this the map name, that's fine, you can change it if you want. Clip DEM to area of interest, sure, click on OK. Oh, video driver has failed. Okay, so this computer, the graphics aren't that great, so it's not even worth trying. I'm going to try cancel this if possible and just export my Voxy. And then I can import it into a 3D window on another computer that's got better graphics. And um, then I can, I'll do a video about how to use the 3D viewer. Okay, so it's very much telling me my 3D driver has failed. I'm going to go here, I'm going to right click, go export. Um, into this folder, yeah, I'm going to export the voxel. I'm going to click save. 
and so that's to be used at a later stage. So good luck, I hope your boxy model works. Let me know if you get any errors, I don't know if I'll be able to solve them. Um, but yeah, very often it's linked to proxy settings and universities blocking stuff.